In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this procedural metal crosswalk plate in Blender. So I was jogging through my neighborhood one day, and I noticed that there were these metal crosswalk plating on the sidewalk. And so I examined it closer and I took some pictures and I thought it would be a really cool procedural material to create. So that's what I'm going to show you in this video. Real quick before we start, this video was brought to you by my Blender procedural material packs. So every time I create 10 more procedural materials, then I create a procedural material pack. So each pack contains 10 realistic procedural materials created with Blender's procedural nodes. If you'd like to purchase the material packs, I'll have a link in the description where you can check them out on my Gumroad store. And that's a great way to help support me and this YouTube channel. Or if you'd like to learn how to create all of my procedural materials, you can check out my procedural material tutorial playlist on YouTube. Again, I'll have the links in the description. And you can also purchase each single material by itself on my Gumroad store, like this material here. All right, so let me just show you what I have in the 3D space. So I just pressed Shift A and I added a plane, and then I'm going to be using the displacements to make the bumps pop out. So I'm gonna tab into edit mode and using the object context menu, I'm going to subdivide this, and I'm just gonna to continue to do that, and I'm gonna subdivide it until it's pretty detailed, uh, something like that. And then I'll tab back into object mode and I'm gonna rotate this plane over on the x-axis by 90 degrees so it's pointed up, and then I'll just move it over here so it's on the side of the camera. And then also I think it looks cool to preview a procedural material on a sphere. So I'm gonna press Shift A and I'm gonna add an icosphere. And then again, I want it to be pretty subdivided so we can use the displacements. So on the subdivision, I'm gonna turn this to a six. So it's very smooth. And also I will shade that smooth with the object context menu. And I can just move it over just like that. And then I will also be using the adaptive displacements. So you can use that as well if you'd like to. Um, so right over here on the render properties, just make sure this is set to cycles because the displacement in the node editor won't work in Eevee so just make sure this is set to cycles and then if you want to use the adaptive subdivision you need to change the feature set over to experimental and then let's click on the object here I'm going to click on new and I can just call this crosswalk plate and then also you can click and drag and drop this material onto any other object that you want to add it to. Now there's just a couple more things we need to do. If you click right over here on the material properties, you can scroll down and right under here under the settings, there is displacement settings under surface. So I'm going to change this to displacement and bump and that way the material can use the displacements. And then just one more thing, I want to turn on the adaptive subdivision. So I'm going to go to the modifier properties. I'm going to click on add modifier and I'm going to add the subdivision surface on this object. So there we go, there is the subdivision surface. Now I'm going to turn on the adaptive subdivision and then also on the dicing scale I'm going to turn this to like a 5 because I don't need it to be too high detail because this is already a pretty subdivided icosphere. And then let's click on this object as well, the plane. I'm going to click on add modifier and I'm going to go right down here and add a subdivision surface and then again I'll turn on the adaptive subdivision and I'll turn the dicing scale to like a 2. And then I will also be using the node wrangler add-on in this tutorial to preview different nodes. So if you don't have that enabled, you can just go to edit and then open up Blender's user preferences. And then under the add-ons tab, if you search for the node wrangler, you can just check mark the node wrangler add-on and I'll show you how to use it in the video. So to start off, we need to create some procedural dots and then we need those dots to be tiling and repeating again and again. So to do that, I'm gonna press shift A and I'm gonna search for a texture coordinate. So let's just take the texture coordinate and I'm gonna drop it down here. And we can also go up into rendered mode just to preview our material. So I'm now going to press shift A and I'm going to search for a vector math node. So let's take the vector math and drop it right here. And then I want to take the object and I want to plug that into the vector. Now let's control shift and click on the add node. And to make this value repeat itself, I'm going to click on the add and I'm going to change this to a fraction. So now that we've changed that to fraction, you can see that it's repeating itself. Now you can see that the value is starting right here in the center and then it's going out on the y-axis and the x-axis. So I want to bring this to the center so that we can create a dot in the middle. So to move it to the center, I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to search for a mapping node and let's drop the mapping node right here. Now to move it to the center, I'm going to take the x value and I'm going to change that to a negative 0.5. And you can see now it's moved over, but we also need to move it up. So on the y value, I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to set it to a negative 0.5. And now you can see that that is in the middle, just like that. 
All right, so that is good, but right now this is just going to create one dot in the center of each of these tiles, and so I want to be able to scale this. So I'm going to press Shift A, and I'm going to search for a, another vector math node. Let's drop this vector in a math node right here, so it's going to be right after the texture coordinate, and then I'm going to change this from Add, and I'm going to change it to Scale. So right down here under Distance and Length, it's Scale. So now if we change this value, it's going to scale that up, and you can see it's going to be repeating itself over and over. So I'm going to change this scale value to three and that way there's going to be a big dot wherever the tile is so now we need to actually make this look like a dot so to do that I'm gonna press shift a and I'm gonna search for a separate XYZ because we want to separate the X Y and Z values so I'm gonna click on this and I'm just gonna drop it right here after the mapping if you hold down the control and shift key and then click on different nodes that is going to preview the node that's using the feature from the node wrangler so if I control shift and click on the separate XYZ you can see the the X one is going up and down. Let's control shift and click on that again. And the Y one is going back and forth. So I now want to just combine the X and the Y together. So I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to search for a combine X, Y, Z. And let's drop this right here. And then I want the X to go to the X and the Y to go to the Y. And then we need one more node to make this look like a dot. I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to search again for a vector math node. Let's drop the vector math node right here after the combine X, Y, Z. And I'm going to change this one from add to length because we just want to use the length of the value. So I'm going to go right down here and under distance here it is length and then let's control shift and click on the node to preview it and now you can see that we have procedural dots and if we go right back over here to the scale we can just scale those dots up and it's going to be an infinite amount of dots all right, so there we go. So this is our node setup for the dots. So if you want to be able to organize this better, you can press shift A and you could search for a frame. Let's just click on the frame and drop it here. And then if you box select all these nodes, you can click and drag and drop them into the frame. And then they're all going to be together in the frame. And then also, if you want to label the frame, you can select the frame and press N and that is going to open up the side panel. And you could change this label to large dots, just like that. And then I'll press N to close the side panel. And so now this group of nodes is the large dots. So I want to do that again, but just have the small dots instead. So I'm going to deselect everything and I'll just box select the entire thing. And I'll press Shift D to duplicate this and bring it up here. Now, if you click on this frame, you can press N to open up the side panel. And I can rename this to small dots and then I can press N to close that panel. And then let's also control shift and click on the length to preview it. So I wanna make these small instead of large, so we just need to change the scale value. So I'm gonna change the scale right here to a value of 20. So now you can see that we have the small dots and then control shift and click on this and we have the large dots. So now we want to combine the two dots together. So I'm gonna press shift A and to combine them, I'm gonna search for a mix RGB. Let's drop it here. So we want this value to go into color two, and then we want this value to go into color one. So I can now control shift and click on that to preview it. Now, right now we're just using the mix, and so it's just evenly blending them together. So I wanna use a mask to tell it where it's gonna be the large dots and where it's gonna be the small dots. So to do that, I'm gonna press shift A, and I'm gonna search for a color ramp node. Let's just drop the color ramp node right down here. And I'm just gonna bring this up and also bring the mix over a little bit. And that way I can put the color ramp right in here. And I will also bring these back just a little. So what I want to do is I want to take the big dots. So I want to take the length and I want to put that into the factor of the color ramp. And I'll just bring this up right here. So I can now use this color ramp as a mask to tell it where it's going to be the large and the small dots. So I'm going to take the color and I'm going to stick that into the factor here on the mix. Now it didn't really do anything and that's because we need to make this more contrasty. So if I control shift and click on the color ramp, you can see how it is right now. It's kind of gray. So if I start to drag these together, you can see that now the dots are much more contrasty. Now I actually want to switch these values, so I'm going to put the white value right over here and the black value over here. And then I'm going to bring these both over a little bit to make the dots bigger. So I want this white one to be right about here under the arrow, and then I want the black one to be pretty close. Um, but you can see there's just a tiny little bit of blending, but it is pretty close. So now if I control shift and click on this, you can see that is much better. So now we have the large dots on top of the small dots. So now let's add this into the displacement. So I'm going to take the principle and I'm going to bring it way up here, and then I can control shift and click on it to preview it. And let's also bring the material output 
right up here. And then also I'll press Control S to save this. So I now just wanna use this mix as the displacement. So I'm gonna press Shift A and I'm gonna search for a displacement node and let's just drop the displacement right here. So I can now take the color and I wanna put that into the displacement on the material output, but we need to convert this to displacement data. So I'll take the displacement and we're gonna drop that right in between the mix and the displacement. And then I need the mix here. I need this color to be going to the height and then that will work properly. Now, if you let that load up, you can see it's way too strong. So on the mid-level here, I'm gonna turn that to a zero so we aren't using any mid-level. And then I'll turn the strength way down to a 0 0.03. Let's just wait for that to load up. And now if you zoom in here, you can see that is looking much better. So this is starting to look like what we want, but you can see that the dots aren't popping out. They're actually going back in. So I wanna change the shape of those dots. So to do that, I'm gonna press Shift A, and I'm gonna search for the RGB curves and I'll drop the RGB curves right here and I'm going to drop it in between the length and the color too. So I'll just drop it right there. So we can actually use the RGB curves to create the shape of the dot. And I accidentally hit the G, so just click back over here on the C. We don't want to use the green values, we want to use the C. So I'm going to start by clicking right here on this bottom dot right here, right in the corner, and I want to bring it all the way up to the top. Then I'm going to take this dot right here and I'm gonna drag it all the way to the bottom. So now you can see if you kind of look on the side here, wait for that to load up, you can see now the dot is popping out, but I want the bump to be curved and smooth on the edge. So I'm gonna click right here to add another dot and then I'm gonna bring this dot right down here and I'll just bring it right over here. So you can see there's this curve right here and then there's this curve right here and I just wanna put this curve right here so almost to the end of this grid. Then I'm gonna to click to add another dot and I'm gonna bring this dot right up here. So you can see there's this grid and then there's this grid right underneath it. So I wanna bring this dot right up here, close to the corner, close to the edge, but a little bit back. And then I'm going to click to add another dot and I wanna make this a bit sharper because you can see it's kind of round. So I'm gonna bring this way down and bring this pretty close to this one so that this is nice and sharp. So you can see basically what we're doing is we are creating the shape of that bump. And then let's also select the bottom dot right here. And I'm just gonna bring it up slightly just so that you can see a tiny little bit of that line going down before it goes over to this dot right there. All right, so that is the first one and you can now see that, that shape is looking much better. But I wanna do the same thing for the small dots. So let's zoom out. I'm gonna take the RGB curves and I'll press Shift to duplicate it and I'll drop it right here behind the small dots. You can see the length is going into the color one. Just drop the RGB curves in between that. Now this is already looking pretty good, but I want those big dots to not be coming out quite as far. So I'm gonna zoom in and I'm gonna take this dot right here and I'm gonna drag it far down. And I'll drag it right down here so it's a little under half. So you can see there's this grid here, this grid here, and then this dot right here is gonna be a little underneath this third grid right here. And then I don't want this to be going way up because if you zoom in, you can see those small dots now are kind of going back in and I don't want that. So I'm gonna click on this and I'm gonna drag this down because I want this dot to be at the very top. And then this one is gonna go down. So it's gonna be a nice smooth curve going down. And then let's also select this dot right here and I'm gonna drag it down so it's going all the way to the bottom. We can also click on this one and bring it down and a bit closer so it's a bit more smooth. And then I'm also going to click to add another dot right here and we're gonna bring this dot right down here and just smash it at the very bottom. So now we just have that shape right there and that is looking very nice. So there we go, that is it for the displacements. So you can see we now have those small dots and the large dots. So let's press Control S again to save. So we are almost done with the material. Um, you can see this circle right here is looking really weird. That's because I just need to select the circle and I'm gonna press R to rotate and I'm gonna rotate it over on the X axis and then I'll type in nine zero and enter. Just rotate that over so that I can see it from the front. All right, so this is looking really good and it's almost done, but I just wanna add a little bit of bump here on the normal and then I also wanna change the base color. So I'm gonna press Shift A and I'm gonna search for a noise texture. Let's just drop the noise texture right down here. And then if you make sure the noise texture is selected, you can press Control T, and that is using the Node Wrangler feature, and it's gonna add the texture coordinate and mapping. Now we don't need the mapping, so I'm gonna select it, and then I'll press X to delete it. And then I wanna plug the object into the vector. So right here on the noise texture, 
render, I'm going to turn the detail all the way up to the max, which is 15. And then I can put this noise texture into the base color to give it just a little bit of noise. So I'll take the factor and I'm going to plug that into the base color. Now it's still looking white right now. And so I want to add a color ramp in here to change the colors. So I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to search for a color ramp and let's click on the color ramp and we're just going to drop it down here. So we can now change the colors of the color ramp and that is going to change the final colors. So I'm going to click on this white tab right here. I'm going to click on the color and I'm going to make this one kind of a construction yellow color. And if you'd like to use the same exact color that I'm using, you can click over on the hex value and you can type in a hex value of C1. 841F. So that is the color that I'll be using. And then I'm also going to click and drag and drag this over so it's kind of over that R letter because I want most of this to be yellow. Now this one here, I want this to look like a little bit of dirt here and there. So I'm going to click on the black one right here. I'm going to click on the color and I'm going to make this one a dark brown color. And again, if you'd like to use the same exact hex value that I'm using over here on the hex value, you can type in 33. Three, two, six, one D. So that is the exact color that I'll be using. And then I also want to show a little bit more of it. So I'll drag it over. So it's kind of under the minus. So if you control shift and click on the color ramp to preview it, let's just wait for that to load up. You can see that most of it is yellow, but then there's just a little bit of dirt here and there because people would be walking on the crosswalk plate. And so it would probably get a little bit dirty. All right. So let's control shift and click on the final material. Now there is just one more thing I want to do. And that is, I want to give it just a tiny little bit of bump. So I'm going to take the factor right here on the noise texture, and I'm going to put that into the normal on the principle. And we need to convert this to normal data. So I'll press shift a, and I'm going to search for a bump node and we can use the bump node to convert this black and white data to normal data. So I'm going to drop it right in here. And then I want the factor to be going into the height on the bump. And then the normal can go into the normal. Now that is way too strong right now. So I want to make that much less strong. So right down here on the strength, I'm going to turn the strength value to a 0.05. That way it's going to be much less strong, but if you zoom in there, you can just see there's a tiny little bit of noise and it just gives it a bit more detail. And that is it. So that is the final material. So I'll just give this a render and we can take a look at the final thing. All right. And there it is. So there is the finished render. So that's going to be it for this tutorial. Thank you for watching. And I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. And again, if you'd like to help support me in this channel, then you can purchase this procedural material on my Gumroad store and my patrons will be getting it as well on my Patreon page. And if you'd like to purchase more of my procedural materials, then you can check out my blender procedural material packs. Or if you'd like to learn how to create more procedural materials, then you can check out my blender procedural material playlist on YouTube. YouTube. All the links are in the description. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you in a future tutorial.